Hi everyone! Welcome back in for another video. This is Nicole Spore and today I'm sharing some Simon Says Stamp coloring die cut flowers with Copic cards. These cards feature lots of new stamps and dies from the Simon Says Stamp Believe in You release. We're going to be using multiple flower die cuts plus a really fun greeting stamp set to create our cards today. One of my favorite things to do is to take white die cuts and add color to them with your favorite coloring medium. Today I'm going to be creating color to these with Copic markers. I've die cut a bunch of the Cosmos flowers and I'm going to color them in with Copics. I showed you one of the finished flowers there and now I'm going to color in several of them on camera so you can see the process from start to finish. I'm coloring in the stem of the flowers with YG21 and YG17. I did keep the coloring fairly simple for the stems, just adding a couple of colors. For the pink flowers, I'm using RB02, 04, 06, and 09. The four colors really give this beautiful flower lots of depth and dimension. I colored all over the flower with RB02 and then I'm going in and feathering in the color from the center out. Now the center of the flower is a separate die cut piece. The die is all one piece and the, the center comes out separately. This does make coloring in that piece a little bit more simple as you don't have to worry about staying in the lines. Another tip is that I like to color on a glass mat. This Tim Holtz glass mat is fantastic because all you have to take is a little rubbing alcohol in a rag and um, wipe away the Copic markers that are on the glass mat. I do recommend that when you switch colors or are moving from one dye to another, you maybe clean the mat in between each so that you don't accidentally transfer color from the glass mat to another die cut. I'm continuing to feather out that color from the center of the flower out using my four colors. On some flowers I used four colors and some I used three. On the flower center I'm coloring this in with Y08 and Y19. I love how bright and colorful these florals are against a stark white background. As I'm coloring, I'm starting to lay them out on my background to see if how I like the placement. Next, I'm going to color in my next flower with some orange markers using YR02, 04, and 07. Again, the stem is going to be colored with YG17 and YG21. I lay down YG21 first, take a little YG17 to certain areas of the stem and the leaf, and then blend it all out with YG21. We're going to go back in with YR07, which is a yellow-red color, which gives you the beautiful bright orange and feather out our darkest color from the center of the flower before going back in with YR04 and feathering out our mid-tone color. I take that mid-tone color almost to the ends of each petal but not completely covering up the YR02 base color. This is what gives you that great depth and dimension. If it gets blended out too much you can always go back with your darkest color and add in more. The center of the flower is colored with Y08 and Y19 again. In fact, I think all of the flower, or most of the flowers rather, do have this color combination for the flower center with the exception of the yellow flower. For the yellow flower, I'm using Y11 as my base color. This time we're going to use Y08 and Y19 as our darkest and mid-tone colors for this flower bloom. Okay. 
because I use these colors for the flower itself, I'm going to use different colors for the flower center just to give it a little bit different look so it doesn't blend into the flower quite so much. Y19 was used as the color closest to the center of the flower and then I'm blending out almost to the edge of the petals but not completely covering up Y11 with Y08. Again, YG21 and YG17 were used for the stem on my flower. For the flower center, I'm using YR31 and YR24. This is a yellow-red color combination that almost has a brown tone to it because of the colors combined. It gives enough of a difference to the flower center that it helps stand out a little bit. I'm going to continue to color all of my flowers until I'm done, and I've laid them out on my white top fold card base. Next, I'm going to take some Lawn Fawn glue tube ink and, or not ink, adhesive, and I'm going to start adhering my flowers one by one. I picked them up individually and glued them down in place so that I could remember where each of them went. That way I didn't have to try to reconfigure how I had them laid out. Some of them are definitely hanging off the edge of the card, which is what we want. We want this to look like a little snapshot or a little piece of pattern paper. I absolutely love creating my own pattern paper from die cut pieces. This card in particular uses two of my favorite techniques, which is coloring on die cuts with Copic markers or other coloring mediums to add the color, and creating an all over die cut background. This is a really effective, beautiful technique that really doesn't take as long as it looks. To help hold some of these dies flat while I continue to glue them in place, I'm going to use a large acrylic block. This just helps hold everything nice and flat and flush to the card base. I'm trying not to have two of the same color of flower right next to each other for variety on the design. The Crystal Katana is great for picking up small die cut pieces and putting them exactly where you want them to go. This is especially helpful if you don't want to get your fingers into the glue adhesive. Liquid adhesive is fantastic for this because you want the die cut to lay completely flat, plus it's very small and detailed. I have just a couple more flowers to add. Then we will be trimming off all of the excess hanging off the edges of the card with some scissors. I like to wait until the adhesive is completely dry before taking my scissors and trimming that away. Oftentimes you can use some of the leftover pieces that hang off the edge of the card to fill in along the edges of the card design. In this instance, I used almost everything and I really filled in most of the areas pretty well. However, I do think that there's one little spot along the left side of the card that I will add something to. We'll see what we have left over after we trim off all of the excess on the card. I also forgot to color one of my flower centers, so I did that really quickly there before adding it to my card design. Now that it's dry, I'm just going to open up the card and trim away with my scissors anything hanging off of the edge. I hold on to the flower parts until I determine if I need them or not.
One of these yellow pieces, or this little yellow piece here, is what I'm going to end up using along the left side of the card. We're just going to take that little piece and glue it down in place. And that's really going to fill it in nicely and finish off the card design. I can go ahead and discard the rest of those trimmed pieces now. Next, we are going to take one of my favorite stamp sets from the Believe in You release. This is the Thanks and Encouragement Word Mix, and we are going to stamp both of the stamps from this set on some Hero Hughes Pebble cardstock. The awesome thing about this stamp set is it stamps two groups of greeting stamps. And then there's a coordinating die that's all one piece that will die cut each of these phrases individually into really fun shapes that you can use on your card. I went ahead and stamped both and I'm going to keep the extras on hand that I don't use for my cards today to use on another project. I am stamping the phrases on the pebble cardstock with clear embossing ink and heat embossing with white embossing powder. Some of the phrases are pretty small and anything that's kind of a solid image maybe didn't stamp as, as good as I would have liked it to. I think I did discard a couple of them just because I thought they were not legible and you couldn't read them. Most of them were if you stamp these with a regular dye ink, you wouldn't have that same problem. I'm sprinkling on the white embossing powder and then I'm going to heat set both of these before I die cut them with the coordinating die. This is an incredible way to have lots of little sentiments on hand that you can add to cards instantly. There's a good look at all the sentiments that I've stamped. I want to make sure my heat tool is good and warm before I bring it to my project to help reduce warping. You can see the cardstock started to warp up immediately. I will hit the back of the cardstock to help flatten it out a little bit before I run it through my die cutting machine with the die. I love how the white embossed sentiments look on this gray cardstock. This is a great alternative to stamping and embossing on black. Where black might have been kind of harsh against the bright colors that we used on our card, gray is still an incredible neutral, but it is a little softer, which works really nice with the colors we use today. Here's that awesome coordinating die that I'm lining up temporarily taping in place with some post-it tape and then running through my die cutting machine. I think you guys are going to love this die collection. It's re or in the stamp and die collection. It is really, really fun. Let's go ahead and line up the other one and run this one through the die cutting machine as well and then take a look at all the sentiments that we get in this set. It die cuts all of these little phrases perfectly. Look how much fun these are. We get all kinds of greetings for all kinds of cards. The great thing about floral cards is they can be used in all kinds of ways. They don't have to be one thing or another. So there's lots of options here depending on what kind of card you need to make. I'm going to play around with different, different combinations to see what I want to use for my card. I'm also going to play around with where I want to put place these items on the design so that the background that we've colored still takes center stage, but we definitely want that sentiment to show up as well. Ultimately, I opted for the thank you for your kindness and support greeting square for this card. We're going to stick to just that square, but you could use anything that you wanted to. I'm also going to shift it over to the left to that kind of open spot. There's a little spot over there to the left that doesn't really cover up that many blooms. It only covers up part of the stem, and I think that placement is the best. Right there looks really good. 
I'm going to adhere this with some foam adhesive squares. And then to finish my card, I'm going to take Nuvo Crystal Drops in Dandelion Yellow, Carnation Pink, and Ripened Pumpkin, colors that complement and coordinate with the flowers we colored and create some little droplets in the white space of the card. This will just add some additional interest to the design, plus fill in some of that white space. With Nuvo Crystal Drops, you want to make sure and let them sit and completely dry for 24 hours before you try to mail the card design. I love how well these colors complement the Copic colored flowers. You can color your flowers in any color combination that you want. I went with bright and colorful for the summer season, but you definitely don't have to. I hope this has inspired you to create some all over die cut backgrounds with your die cuts as well. For my second card share today, I'm going to use a combination of several of the new flower die cuts from the Believe in You release, starting with this sunflower stem. I loved the sunflower stem when I opened up the package and I couldn't wait to use it. This card kind of evolved over time as I wasn't exactly sure um, how many flowers I was going to use. Initially, I thought I'd use the sunflower stem and the daisy stem. I'm using some post-it tape to hold the little die cut pieces in place so that I can color this in a little bit easier. I have sped up the video a bit to save some time today. I'm coloring in my sunflower with YR 30, 31, and 24 with E55 and E57 as the sunflower center. YG 21 and 17 will again be used for the stem and leaves. I love this die cut. I think it's so beautiful. We're going to end up creating a little row or bouquet of flowers, if you will, along an edge of a card. We're going to be combining the sunflower stem, the daisy stem, and even pulling back in the cosmos stem for this card. For my second flower, I colored the flower center with YR31 and YR24, and then colored in my flower itself with Y11, 08, and 19. Because this one has that inlay style again, I'm going to use a piece of post-it tape on the back to hold my flower petals in place so that I can color them in. I used a powder tool to help deactivate because the post-it tape was pretty sticky and my fingers kept sticking to it. From the flower center, I'm pulling out Y19 over a Y11 base flower color, and then we'll blend out with Y08. In addition to these two flowers, as I mentioned, I did go ahead and die cut two more Cosmos flowers and colored one in the pink colorway and one in the orange, just like I did for the other card. I'm not going to share that in the video to save some time. I die cut two of these daisy stems and I will be showing you how I color the final one in just a second. On my card base, I'm going to go ahead and start adhering some of my elements. I'm playing around with some of those different thanks and encouragement word mix sentiments that we used from the first card. I want to make sure and leave room for my sentiments. I'm going to start gluing down my largest flower, leaving some space along the bottom edge of the card. We are going to use a background stamp to ha kind of help ground everything along that bottom edge. We'll add that here in just a minute. I've added one of my Cosmos flowers in the pink colorway and then we'll add our daisy stem. I'm 
I want to make sure and not press the Cosmos flower down all the way until I add all the inlay pieces for the sunflower. The post-it tape not only serves to hold the inlay pieces in place while you're coloring, but it keeps them in order so it's easy to create the inlay. The Spellbinders Tool-in-One comes in super handy to press those little pieces in place along the die. As you're working, you can use an acrylic block to help hold everything flat if you need to. This is especially helpful when using liquid adhesive. We need to inlay the daisy as well. Again, the pieces are stuck to the post-it tape, so it makes it easy to line those up really quickly right here on our card. I've kept the background white to really show off the coloring of these beautiful new flower die cuts. I'm going to add my orange Cosmos flower down here and I'm going to just kind of trim it a little bit shorter. I wanted some variation in height and I didn't want it to be right or as tall as the pink flower. I don't have to worry that they don't line up. I'll be covering up that bottom area with a little strip. We're going to take the Stripe Jumble background. This is a new stamp from the Believe in You release and we're going to stamp this with black ink on white cardstock and just trim a thin strip of this to lay along the bottom edge of our card. We're not using a ton of it, but it's just going to add enough interest along the bottom edge to really just kind of clean that up perfectly. I trimmed this into about a one inch strip and then I think I trimmed it down to maybe about three quarters of an inch. I didn't want to use a whole lot along the bottom edge. I thought this was a little too tall, so I think I, it might even be just about a half inch. We're going to glue this along the bottom edge. And that instantly gives a fantastic little border that has lots of interest along the bottom of the card. I need one more flower to round out my little flower garden here and that's going to come with another daisy stem. This time we're going to color it in with some purple markers. I'm using some blue violets to color in this flower. I also want to make sure that I have left enough room for my sentiments. I'm double checking constantly to make sure that I haven't glued anything down. Our base color is BV0000. And then we'll blend in, including the flower center, BV17, 13, and 11. We'll use YG. 21 and 17 for the stem on this flower as well. We're really darkening up the flower center with BV17. The addition of the purple on this card rounds it out nicely and really gives almost all of the colors of the rainbow representation on this card. I'm going to keep working to get that color blend exactly the way I want it to look until it's blended out perfectly.
we want to make sure and glue this flower down in place before we add our sentiments. While some of the leaves and things are on top of the sentiment, we don't want to cover up too much of it as we still want it to be legible. I will be combining two sentiments from the thanks and encouragement word mix for this card. This is a great encouragement type of card or it can work as a sympathy or thinking of you card as well. We'll go ahead and put some adhesive on the back of the larger or the square sentiment and glue that in place with one of the leaves and one of the flower petals slightly overlapping the square. Then we need to add the inlay pieces for our purple daisy stem. I accidentally bumped my post-it tape paper and they all fell out so it was a little bit more of a puzzle piece to get them all together for this particular stem. I dropped it off camera. <laughs> I love how all of these die cut flowers work together so beautifully to create this little flower border here. It definitely is a showstopper and a really fun technique. The other phrase for my card I'm going to attach with foam adhesive right underneath the square. This gives a little dimension to that second sentiment. We're going to take the Nuvo Crystal Drops again in Dandelion Yellow, Ripened Pumpkin, and Carnation Pink and add a few drops all around the design. Just a little bit to add some additional interest and embellishment to finish it off nicely. Now where the top of the card meets our little pattern paper that we created down on the bottom edge of the card, I feel like it needs a little bit of separation there. We will be adding a strip of black cardstock here in a second. The other thing I did to finish off this card was take a white pen and add some pen detail to the center of my flowers. So following the little die cut marks in these, I'm just adding some little white drops. We're going to do this for the daisy stem, the sunflower stem, and the cosmos stem. All three of the flowers. We're just going to go around and add some little white dots to these areas. You could do as much or as little as you want. I kept it just to the flower centers for my purposes today. This little touch adds so much interest to the flower design. Then I trimmed about a quarter of an inch, maybe black cardstock, maybe not even quite that much. Place some 1 8 inch adhesive on the back and then I'm going to adhere this right along that bottom edge to finish off the card. I'll trim off the excess and my second card is all finished. Here's a look at both of the finished card designs. Thank you guys so much for joining me today for these floral die cut cards colored with Copic markers. The supplies I use to create my cards are listed and linked below the video here on YouTube. Here are a couple more videos featuring Simon Says Stamps and Dies that you might be interested in. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and be sure to subscribe to my channel to never miss a video. Thanks for watching and we'll catch you next time.